Friend. No, no, no. You're not even needed in the case of this episode. We open this one with Koisu proving that she was a bit socially reclusive and yet still followed the traffic laws, which is a very important thing in this truck coon filled world. She made her way to the park where Harko is playing with some kids. <laughs> Girl, please don't tell me you're a fan of that one Uzumaki chapter. Seriously, I could not eat mushrooms for months after reading that. The pink lead of course took notice of the seemingly lonely Koisu and invited her to play with them. Nah, that was legit pretty sweet and wholesome. So I say we just go back to the NSFW stuff. As usual, the inner media were handily defeating the Tresmagia with, I think, lighter fluid monsters? Huh, I wonder who hooked them up with that stuff. Now why would anybody soak a rope in kerosene? <laughs> And I guess after the fight, they reverted back to their normal forms and had to wash all that petrol off their clothes in the school bathrooms. Yeah, the janitors are gonna have a field day with that. Their latest loss led to an argument between Karko and Sal, but it was broken up by their leader. Likely realizing their team's morale was at an all-time low, Haruka decided to take the initiative and make sure that they were all in top form. Haruka special and this is why you tell your vegan friends that you respect their lifestyle, but that you don't have to follow it. She also had them participate in strategy meetings using their own products, which just makes me wonder if they get their own free samples, and some basic warm-ups. The latter allowed Kiwi and Utena to have a little extra screen time as this is all they're gonna get this week, and oof, the animation is again pretty off this week. I mean, Sal is just looking like an old school key character here, neither that or Tamamo Arya. <laughs> anyway, throughout all of this, Harka's friends and unknown enemies were calling her the mom of her group. This would be followed up with a legit really wholesome scene of her playing with Koisu in the park. Again, while Haruka is clearly meant to be a parody of the overly idealistic pink magical girl lead, she's at least very sincere to the point that it does become admirable in a show like this. And hey, she was even really economically sound, as part of the reason for her shroom bento were because they were in season and cheap. However, she'd have to save the shopping for later, as Koisu wasn't done playing, and wanted to change things up a little with her alter ego. Of course, Haruka realized that it would be best to regroup with the rest of her team away from this overpowered lowly, but I guess she also was bad at playing Five Nights at Freddy's. Also, this might be a bit of a plot hole, as for whatever reason, Sayo and Karuko didn't sense Koisu unleashing her powers until much later. I mean, granted, we don't know everything about the magical system of this world, but you'd at least think they'd more easily pick up on a fully powered narrow Alice rather than a drained one. Though as for what she was using her powers for... <laughs> Kiwi is a bad influence on this girl. Or maybe it's the other character her VA plays. <laughs> Jokes aside, these playing house scenes were initially really damn cute and could be interpreted as kind of wholesome in the sense that Koisu might have been trying to help relieve some of the needless stress that Harko is placing on herself. Yeah, she had said that she'd be willing to play the mother if the two were ever to play house, but the little villainess might recognize that she kind of needed a break from the whole mother act in general. Though, I do say it was only initially cute and wholesome, because it is still technically brainwashing and thus kind of horrible on Koisu's part, but yet she is kind of helping Haruka in her own warped childish ways and uh... Yeah, of all the things in this show, this is the most off-putting for me. Maybe I'm just a weirdo. Well, to break that up, why don't we also turn this into a Karuko episode? During all this, we learned that she wasn't into eating octopus, which, considering her line of work, was kind of justified, though those taco-less takoyaki are the very definition of empty calories there. And we also got her origin story. Not too surprisingly, based on her coloring, the yellow Karuko was the third and last member to join the Tresmagia, and in keeping with those pre-cure tropes, she initially refused a call to action and even just becoming friends with Haruka. Though, to be to be fair, she really didn't need any help taking care of herself. He's already dead. 
And yeah, this kind of justified the bad animation in this episode, as it allowed this one savage beatdown to look especially good, and they even purposely used some bad animation for some comedic effect here, so major props. But yeah, interestingly, at least as far as I can recall, this whole episode is actually an anime original, and yet stuff like this feels like it should have been the original manga. It's a backstory that provides some good characterization for both Haruka and Karko, showing the former was legit too sweet for this rotten world, and Karko was always a badass, and yet also emotionally distant even though she could use some company, and did even kind of cleverly paralleled with the other blonde in this show. Speaking of whom, we check back in on Koyasu and Haruka, with the latter having remembered who she was, ironically thanks to her memories of Kariko, which broke the illusion. <laughs> okay, now we're back to the regular awkwardness. We're good people, we're all good now. Though understandably, she wanted to end playtime, which Koisu was willing to comply with, but after again picking up that the girl was lonely, Haruka decided to keep playing house and yeah, okay, maybe this little brat's intentions weren't entirely wholesome. And again, Haruka's empathy is both an admirable trait, but it was also being used for comedy as she was putting herself into these embarrassing situations. <laughs> Haruka, never go full Madoka with your self-sacrifices. Anyway, in keeping with this episode's kind of insane shifting tone, we went from recreating that one scene in Yakuza to Karko recognizing through some little girls play acting as her team how much of a positive impact Haruka had had on her. We also learned that the kids in this world had absolutely no taste. Finally though, this was when she and Sao picked up on Koisu, but it was too late. No, I'm not talking about saving their friend's life, but rather whatever dignity she had left at this point. Again, I'm just kind of surprised how few Ahegals we've gotten throughout the show so far. Then again, me that's because we're still missing out on a certain Sayo episode that thankfully is probably going to get adapted next week. For now though, like an actual kid, Koisu just got bored and decided to move on. With that, the episode ended with Haruka at least feeling satisfied that she helped someone, even if it was a psychotic little brat, and suggested that they have octopus and mushroom bento the next day. How about new? As an anime original episode, and much like the extra spicy scenes they put in, this did feel like a good addition. It gave us a little more background for the Tres Magia, which we will likely get even more of next week, and there were some legit wholesome scenes even when you factor in the brainwashing. I will say, it's a little weird that we got two Koisu episodes in a row, but at the same time, this wasn't exactly just her episode. I think something that really benefits this adaptation is the choice to give a little more focus to the Tres Magia. Yeah, even though this is a story meant to focus on Utena being a villain protagonist, it's also not a bad idea to learn a little bit more about the Tres Magia, especially when explaining why she's so obsessed with them. In the case of Haruka, it makes total sense that she is a genuine sweetheart, albeit in need of a few dozen extra brain cells, or at least a better sense of survival. But yeah, once again, her being a pink lead parody obsessed with helping others was played up for some good comedy. It also gave a good opportunity to show that Koisu was a bit of a sweetheart trying to help her enemies even if both of her teammates seemed to have been a bit of a bad influence on her. Most of all though, as a Karko fan, it was great to get an origin story that again, I don't even remember being in the original manga. With it, I can also admit that I might need to retract something I said last week about how they should have done chapter 10 of the manga in that episode to better capitalize on the events of the previous episode, as this episode actually acts as a better lead-in for it. Yeah, next week, just going by that title, is going to be Sayo's origin story, which will lead into one of my favorite scenes in the manga, which yeah, kind of works out better, so I'll eat that crow. And as for this episode, it was overall really enjoyable with some good characterization and some great comedy that actually took advantage of some of the lower production value. Harka might have lost even more of her dignity, but hey, how many kids can say they managed to enjoy their childhood all over again? Well, I look like you, some sort of big baby. Thank you for watching, and be sure to check out our other videos on this channel. Starting next month, we are planning on covering our first Super Sentai for this channel, as well as other toy properties that we've been itching to look at. Look forward to it, and until then though, for now my friends, and uh... Okay, who let the little demon spawn have his espresso this morning?